What GitHub Copilot did for developers, Copilot in Excel will do for data analysts. I did not say that. Satya Nadella did at Microsoft Ignite Conference 2024. Um, and I think what we're doing in Excel, though, is perhaps one of my favorite things. You know, just like what GitHub Copilot did for software developers, Copilot in Excel will do for data analysts. As I watch Satya make that statement, it's done on me that Microsoft Copilot in Excel is about to transform data analysis forever. But here is the twist. It will not replace data analysts. It is going to create two new types of analysts, those who master Copilot and those who become irrelevant. Hey everyone, do you invoke it here? In this video, I'm going to share with you my first impression using Copilot in Microsoft Excel. This feature has been there for almost a year now, but it has been enhanced significantly. For example, it can perform deep advanced analytics by executing Python code even within Copilot. Let's look at a very simple use case. Here is a sample data from Sankofa Bazaar. Sankofa Bazaar is a feature owner company which I run, I manage for now. Over time, I hope you're going to convince me to start the business, which I will. Back to the use case. The goal of this video is to actually share with you what it feels like starting data analysis with this new copilot in Excel. How few clicks in a minute can deliver great insight that you might not even achieve in hours. Let's get into it. Just before we start this analysis, for you to get copilot enabled, you need additional license. I've inserted the link in the video description that will guide you through the licensing. Right. Here's the data set that I'm going to be using. It has 100 rows, as you can see right here. And as I'm clicking everywhere, you can see the Copilot icon following me. When I click on the icon, you can see these other options. Suggest a formula column, suggest conditional formatting, summarizing using Pivot or chart, get deeper analysis results using Python, Teach me something about Excel, ask Copilot, or even an option for you to hide, you know, the icon. All these things are also going to be available at the top right on the Copilot icon here. As you can see, you can create formula, you can understand your data, you can perform advanced analysis, which is the Python capability, uh, ability to execute Python code. You can apply color and formatting, you can even ask Copilot or take any of these options that is presented here. Another thing there is you can actually refresh these options in case you want something different as the prompt, it can bring them up. Let's start analyzing our data. The first thing I want to do here is to turn this guy, format it as dollar USD. So I'm going to instruct Copilot to format it as dollar. It takes a few seconds to understand and also apply the formula. The new copilot in Excel is now much more capable, meaning your data does not have to be in table. In previous videos, you might have been watching or using this copilot feature, you need to format your data as table. But in this case, you don't have to. It understands that Excel, as far as there's a column heading, it understands the data there. So it has done something when I click on apply, it's going to automatically, as you can see right there, it is done. The changes has been made and you can also undo by just clicking on this button. It's going to undo the changes. Let's start engaging with each of the options that we have right here. The first will be to suggest a formula column. When I click on it, it's a prompt. So it automatically started going through your data and look for the kind of formula you can create to improve um, the data set. Determine whether each product needs to be reordered by comparing its current stock level to its reorder threshold. That's nice. So it's creating a categorical data from my already existing numeric data. And that will help me to do a dimensional analysis. I can split them by that dimension. Yes, if I over on the insert column, you're going to see it shows me a preview of how it will look and where it will be inserted. If I'm okay with that, I click on insert and voila. It right there. I can see right now the this sufficient. The, I still have enough quantity, but the moment I get to this level, reorder threshold, 
is 78. But my current stock level is 12. It means I should start reordering. That's interesting. Let's highlight all sets where there's reorder. I'm going to type highlight all sets with reorder status as reorder. Meaning on the reorder status, I want it to highlight anywhere the value is reorder. And it's showing me how it's going to execute that. It's going to fill it with yellow, the font with black. If I want it to be red, I will say fill color should be red. It's going to update and show me a different format. Yes, I think I like this. And I'm going to click on apply. And that way, automatically, the colors are red. If you are learning from this video, do where to like and subscribe. Let's also create a new column because I want to see the stock what. I have my current stock level. I have the price. What is the actual what? You know, that it should be stock level multiplied by price. Create a new column stock what derived from stock level multiplied by price. Do you see that? I can see beyond just doing the multiplication, it's also formatting the value in dollars. So overing on it, I can see where it's going to insert it. I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to click on insert. Voila. Up next, I'm going to apply color scale to stock what? So I will say apply apply color scale to stock what? So, and this we apply a conditional rule that will range from the red, which is the alt area, to the green. And let's click on apply. The ticker, the green, the more the what of the stock, the you know the more ticker the red, the lesser the what of the stock, as you can see right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and and also go back right here and try another prompt option understand i'm going to click on summarize using pivot table or chart and what i will do is continue to look into this data try to see if we can build out some charts some deeper insight which i might not be able to get from all the things i've done right now and it's going to show me what is able to detect interesting it was able to build a pivot table and if i'm okay with that i can insert this into a new sheet and this is the pivot table. Let's navigate back to inventory data because it's done to continue analyzing with more prompt. Go back to the source table and I'm back at the source table. I'm going to ask to insert a bar chart of stock worth by category. Let's see how it's going to perform. Wow. Here is it. I'm going to insert this, add it to a new sheet. So. On this sheet, here is the pivot table and here is the chart. I can see this. And of course, you can continue to make changes to this. For example, you can insert data label just to know what value. And for your data label, you can put it inside and probably inside end. I like that. And you can give it color. So see, there are more options you can and you can change the color by just moving to the text option from the color to white over there. Awesome. Let's go back to our inventory data. If I want to continue to analyze this, I need to go back to the inventory data. And here we're going to try other options. This time around, we will go to advanced analysis. So I'm back to the earlier prompt, which is the prompt suggestions, and I can see advanced analysis. Let's click on it. Here's what it will do once it starts advanced analysis. It can create new sheet for the result. It can automatically write and insert Python formulas. It can answer your prompt in multiple messages and go through all the data analysis steps. So I'm going to click on start advanced analysis. As you can see right on the page, it's already running Python script, inserting results and doing as many 
as you know as many things as possible. The moment I click on start advanced analysis, it has actually started. So all my prompt will execute on this page or insert a new page based on the prompt. But this result is based on advanced analysis. If I want to execute anything on the inventory data, I need to stop advanced analysis so that I can go back to inventory data. Even if I switch my tab and start typing something, it's still not going to be applying that here. It's going to apply that on this advanced analysis page because that is exactly what it's doing right now. It's opening a new sheet for it and everything will be done just right there. But let's look at what has been, what has done. It only inserted the table and not so much work has been done now. Add result to new sheet. I can do that, but it's already right here. Please specify the type of analysis you would like to perform on the inventory data. Here are a few suggestions to get started. Analyze the distribution of stock level across different categories. Identify products that are below the reorder threshold. Let's start with this. To answer this question, advanced analysis is able to go through multiple options. And that's what it was saying. It can answer your question with multiple options. And this is what we have right here. It has inserted a box plot. A box plot is a five number summary and it enables you, it just answers so many things about the um, about your data. The minimum, the maximum, the first quartile, the you know, third quartile. Uh, and this can help you see where, where there's variances within your data set. But this is not the regular chart in Excel. This is done by Python. As you can see, even though you cannot format this, but you can instruct to change any label as you want. But right there, we can see, you can make some interpretation from this. What we just, what it just did was to analyze the distribution of stock levels across different categories. You can do the same thing for, you know, stock what, but let's go ahead and do identify products that are below the reorder threshold. It's going to run, doesn't matter how many lines of code it needs to, but it's continue to run and analyze that data and bring, try to answer that question. The product that below the reorder threshold, it has bring them out, um, have been identified. This product needs to be reordered to maintain sufficient stock levels. You can see the result in the data frame. This is the result, 21 rows, and I can insert that into a new sheet. It has feature for only the product that actually um, fall within a category. You can build charts out of this. You can do many other things out of this, but here it is for you. And you can go back to the analysis sheet because this is the central analysis sheet for advanced analysis. I'm going to stop. When I click on stop, basically stop. And that way I can go back to my inventory data and start doing much more. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to be walking you through sales data analysis in preparation for board meeting. And here is a letter from the president of Sankova Bazaar to the data analysis team asking them to analyze this data and prepare some insight for the board meeting. I can't wait to walk you through this step by step and also share the data with you so that we can go through this experience together. See you.